Welcome to Skills to Pay the Bills and today's segment of The Real Secrets of Money. I'm sitting in for your host, Shirley Liu, who is vacationing at Disney World with her daughter, Jade. Have fun, Shirley and Jade. Our special guests today are going to give us some straight talk about in-home elder care and how financial services connect with this service. This is a subject that will touch each and every American at some point during our lifetime. If the truth be told, most of us have very little knowledge about elder care and what to do if you need help. Everybody wants to stay young forever, and we shy away from facing up to we are in aging society. And if we don't prepare for elder years, we are setting ourselves up for some very sad times. Our two guests are going to provide us with some real deliverables today with respect to financial services and in-home senior care. Our first guest is Regional Marketing Director from First Financial Security, and our next guest is the Executive Director of Live Home. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Cary Grant from First Financial Security and David Posner from Live Home. Hello, how Hello. are you guys doing today? Good, to you. Good. how are you? Well, I'm doing fine. Thank you so much for coming. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. And we're going to get started. We're going to pick on David first. <laughs> <laughs> uh, David, can you just tell us a little bit about Live Home? What is it that you that you do? Sure. So Live Home is a private duty home health company. Uh, we started in 1999. And basically, we provide three levels of care. So first, we provide caregivers. Now, those are the aides that go into the home, providing everything from laundry, help to meal preparation or companionship care. We provide uh, care managers, now those oversee the caregivers. They also work with maybe a hospital, they'll work with elder law attorneys or money managers. And then we also have an enrichment program to basically overall help with the clients, enriching their lives as far as a patient focus. Okay. Carrie, now you are in financial services. Yes. And I know, I know just a teeny bit about elder care. And I know a little bit more about financial services, but I need you to help me figure out <laughs> how the two dots. of you are going to marry up. How, how, how are these two industries going to? Uh, exactly. So tell well, us a little bit about what you do and exactly. The well, I ended up meeting David at a networking event a few months ago, and he asked me if he says, "Oh, finances. Are you able to provide long-term care insurance?" Mm -hmm. So we met. Uh, and I explained that yes, that uh, long-term care insurance is one of the products that we're able to provide, but that we actually had two other financial products, uh, retirement products, that would uh, both have living benefits components of them that would work very well as an alternative or in addition to the long-term care insurance. Uh, both of them are indexed and uh, meaning that they are um, protected from market loss, which based on the past few days is, uh, right. is a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's become a reality, huh? Yeah. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Yes. So, uh, so then in the, in the index, it, it sounds like um, what you can do is you have three areas of how? Yes. So it is, uh, there's two different products. Um, and so the first one would be an indexed annuity. Mm -hmm. And that is something where somebody could roll over a 401k or an investment. You take advantage of the upswing of the market, but if there's a loss in the market, your principal locks down. So okay. our clients wouldn't have had any loss in the past few days. Uh, but there is the living benefits component of that. So when you turn on your income stream, you have guaranteed income stream for life. And if you're ever uh, unable to perform two of the six activities of daily living, which is someone who would require live home services to help with bathing or dressing or eating or something like that, that income stream would actually double for five years and then go back to the regular amount after the five years. Wow. Yeah, so the other product. So is that like a, a rider that's exactly, attached to it? Okay. Exactly, it's a lifetime income rider. Okay. And the other product is a form of life insurance that is index universal life. So it protects your family if you should die too soon. Mm -hmm. Or what if you get hit by the bus and don't die? Right. Where's, who's, where's your income going to come from and who's going to be you know, uh, taking care of you and all of these things? You're actually able to access 20 to 80 percent of your face value to survive on and then, God willing, these things don't happen until way down in the future or you need the money for your, right, if you, right. for your uh, assisted living and in-home care. It's your retirement and again, protected from market law. So it's very, very powerful. So your money is working three different ways for you. Okay. So David, what options do your people have that re require assistance? Well, every, everyone's got pretty much the same three options. Uh -huh. And that is, you know, 
uh, nursing facility so they can take their, their mom or dad to you know, one of the Sunrise Manor Cares, different types of assisted living facilities. And they'll pay basically a, a monthly, monthly rent, so about 7,000 here in Northern Virginia. Uh, I've seen as high as 9,000 in, in New York, yes. 9,000. And, and only going up from there. Mm -hmm. uh, the second option is hiring uh, caregiving services. So an aide to kind of come in and take care of their mom or dad. You know, again, providing meals or helping laundry or companionship, helping them with their walking, whatever they might need uh, throughout the house. And then the other option would be a care manager. Again, someone to oversee that type of need that's also going to be working with uh, maybe a hospital, uh, elder law attorney. So if you have family that's not nearby, you might have a care manager to oversee mm -hmm. those types of services. Okay. So those are three main uh, ideas, ideas that someone right. can kind of go with. Now, David, old pal, old friend of mine, <laughs> please tell me that Medicaid and Medicare will take care of this. Absolutely Where not. Where is this money going to come? Nope. $9,000 a month? Yes. And is this in home or this is in if you're in a facility? Uh, oh, well, the ninth, so the 9000 is for like a facility. So the way um, home care work is more on an hourly basis. So several companies have a hourly basis, a, a hour, hourly minimum of like four hours or eight hours or something like that. Um, but it's all private pay. So you're coming out of your pocket or you're coming with long-term care insurance or you're, you, know, you have a trust, something like that that you're going to be able to, to use to pay for it. Hopefully you've matched up with somebody like Carrie uh, to mm -hmm. be able to make sure that you have the finances right. because a lot of the situations come, boom, last minute where you know, a stroke happens or somebody falls yeah, or right. you get diagnosed yeah. with dementia and you need to be able to do something right away. And those are majority of That's our calls. Amazing. I mean, I believe that if I had 10 people lined up in this room right now that you maybe maybe you would have one person mm -hmm. who could could afford that yeah Carrie yeah. what say you I'm living it yeah I'm living she's it a, she right has a now great, great so you're a testimony yeah she has a I great absolutely story. Carrie is not a senior citizen <laughs> 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 Not yet, <laughs> not yet, but I'm prepared for it now. Yeah. I'm prepared so tell me, for tell it. Tell us about so your, your about, experience. So about 10 years ago, um, my family learned the hard way when my sisters drove up to visit my parents and there was a foreclosure sign on the front door of the house. My, oh my. father always worked. My mother paid the bills. My mother was coming down with Alzheimer's. And as the disease was progressing, she wasn't paying the bills and they were being, we later found them all stuffed in drawers. Oh. So they lost their house, they lost a summer home. Mm. And then we needed to start bringing help in. There was no Live Home in the Philadelphia area. And so we did not find a company like Live Home. And the company that we found, there was just a revolving door of caregivers coming in. And keep in mind, my parents don't need help. So they would send them away or there was a, they don't deal, with, deal well with change. There was constantly, there was no continuity. There was constantly somebody new who was coming in. There was no care, care manager to meet with my siblings and me. And plus, we're spread out across the country, but there was no care manager to explain to us what this all was. My parents didn't have the long-term care insurance, and they were quickly um, outliving their retirement. So, um, so Social Security paid for some, and then my parents were using their retirement money, which ran out about three years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, uh, the, the amount that we're covering is $8,000 in Philadelphia, and Social Security covers a very small amount of that. And so it's just divvied up among the siblings. But knee-jerk reaction, we all ran out immediately and got long-term care insurance because that was what we knew of. I, I'm, I'm just amazed at that. It's, it's, um, it's an amazing it's just, thing. That is really something. Well, David, okay, Carrie is $8,000 a yep. month. So is this something that will say 8000 is what it's going to be, say, two or three years from now, or maybe even a year from now? I mean, are the costs yeah. going up? Uh, yeah, unfortunately, they are. I mean, just like everything else in this world, um, the costs are only getting, getting higher and higher. Uh, the good news is they are building more and more facilities, and there's several companies out there. But just like everything else, you have to find the good companies to, to be able to match up with and work with. So come you know two, three years down the line, I mean, it's only going to surely double, triple, and continue to increase uh, because as baby boomers get older, you know, 
supply and demand is, is going to keep those prices going as high as possible, unfortunately. Well, what, what in the world is, is, is it the doctor's fees <laughs> that are costing or what? What is costing it? What is driving the cost up so? Well, uh, again, just it's the so, so, no, uh, again, it's, you know, supply and demand that families, um, you know, there's uh, the quality ones are, are a little bit scarce and trying to find a good one. But also, people are living longer than they have in the past. You know, 10 years ago, I think the average age was 76. Now the average age is 83. Uh, think about a diagnosis like dementia, mm -hmm. where you might have all your facilities and be able to, to live. You just ha need somebody to look out after you yeah. Yeah. because you might li you're going to live with dementia for 5, 10 years. Yeah. And as people are getting older and older, they're living longer, there are more diseases are happening, mm -hmm. um, the possibility of you know things like strokes, heart attacks, all that stuff begins to increase as you get older. So that's why you're seeing more and more of a need coming coming up. And it's it's companies that, that know how to specialize in stroke care and dementia care um, and you know uh, heart conditions um, that are really coming to the forefront that are going to be able to, to specialize and be able to work with mm -hmm. families. But as far as the price goes, yeah, it's, it's unfortunately only going up. Uh, it's just amazing. I mean, I, I didn't know that. I have a senior mom. She is 91. She'll be 92 next um, year. And health-wise, I mean, she's in better shape than my sister and I. Uh, but I am beginning to, you know, to see some of the um, uh, memory losses and things like that. Although, I have that happen to yeah. me. <laughs> we, all, we all lose our keys every now and yeah. then. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I should put myself in that um, the category as no, well. No, you look good. But um, I, you know, the numbers just uh, just flabbergast me. I don't know yeah. what we would do if if we had to to do that. Yeah. And I, I right now I'm still working, and my sister's still working. So most of the kids are not in a position to, to, to stop work. And a lot of the stuff comes up last minute, like I said, the strokes, mm. the falls, yep. the, the, d disease, um, the um, diagnosis of dementia. I mean, this is not something that, like, oh, we're going to give you a diagnosis in, in two weeks. Oh, we're going to give you a diagnosis right. in two years. Right. You get a diagnosis, you, get a, you fall, you get a stroke. You've got to be able to, to prepare right. for it the next day. That's right. If not that night. Yeah, and I, I have a testimony on that. Well, it's time for us to take a short station break, so don't touch that dial. We'll be right back. Thank you for joining us on Skills to Pay the Bills and today's segment of The Real Secrets of Money. Our subject today is on in-home elder care service and how financial services can help put you in the driver's seat. Please welcome back our special guests, Carrie Grant from First Financial Security and David Posner from Live Home. Thank you. Hi. We're going to start with Carrie, uh, this section. Uh, Carrie. I know that FFS um, offers long-term care. Right. So can you talk to us about alternative solutions because long-term care might not be? Well, long-term care is what everyone is, most people are familiar with. Mm -hmm. And I remember sitting down with my financial planner a few years ago and number one, being shocked at how expensive it was and that I would have to pay for it about, a, I, for me it was about $150 a month, but I most likely wouldn't be able to use it till I'm 85 or 90. Hmm. So to have spent all that money, and then the part that got me was, I might not be able to use it if I'm still able to do, you know, dress myself and feed myself right. and all of that. My father's 91, he can't hear or see anything, but he would not be able to use it. My mother would be able to use it. But I still saw the money that we were paying, so I went ahead and I signed it and I got it. But when I learned of the products from FFS, and where I'm able to actually just redirect the money that I'm putting into my retirement fund, my long-term care insurance, and my life insurance, combine them into one multi-purpose policy so that I'm prepared no matter what life throws at me. If I die tomorrow, my family's covered. If I become ill, heart attack, stroke, cancer, or 
when I'm elderly and I need assistance. That money is there for me. But in the meantime, until it's needed, not good, in the meantime, until it's right. needed, right. it's now my retirement. And it's not losing money in the market like my 401k. Mm -hmm. So, and we do have, and we are able to also sometimes take the income stream from some of these policies to pay the long-term care. So some people still want to have that long-term care insurance mm -hmm. and, and have it as in addition to. So we use a combination of these products okay. and really just, you know, want to make sure that everybody is ready and protected for the future. Your family, make sure that everybody, if you don't have your life insurance, if you don't have anything so that if these things come, the, our senior years are coming. Yeah. And, they are coming. And Absolutely. Yeah. We got to yeah. be ready. So we there's not, ready. no such thing as too much retirement right. savings. Right. Absolutely. Right. That's, that's, yeah. that's, that's so. That's really powerful. Now, let me ask you, Carrie, um, what is the maximum age that someone could, because um, I know there are age limits on, you know, when you can write a policy. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's 80. I think I've, I saw one a company that would write uh, someone as old as 90, mm -hmm. but generally mm -hmm. it's around 75 or 80. Is that the yeah, same? Yeah, so uh, you can go a little older on the life insurance policies, mm -hmm. and the and it, and it varies depending on the carrier right. and on the annuities. Typically, it's 80, age right. 80. But there's different, but there's different products for different ages. So we really look at each person's situation mm -hmm. and see what are their goals, what are they looking to do, what's their situation, what are their health issues. Like so, for example, if someone has. Um, Alzheimer's or whatever mm -hmm. you know the the situation is and they're ineligible to get any kind of insurance then an annuity could be a very good option for them mm -hmm. if they have money in an investment or something that they could roll over into this annuity they could turn on that guaranteed lifetime income stream and that income stream is guaranteed for the rest mm -hmm. of their life and then if they're unable to do two of the six activities of daily living then that income stream doubles for five years right the only requirement is you can't already be in assisted living so as I'm listening to you both, um, and then you correct me if I'm mm -hmm. wrong, I want mm -hmm. feedback from both of you. Sure. Um, do you think there is a uh, some kind of gap in information and education to people while they're not starting this earlier? Because you know, even though you can get a policy at 70, it's probably going to be a lot expensive, exactly. more expensive money's not than if you did far. it when yeah. you were in your 30s. But how do you get 30 year olds to listen because they think they're going to live forever? I did. I mean, that's I what know. I thought. I know. Yeah. So what do, you, what do you think about that? What do you think we it, have it, to but do? Education is the key yeah. word. Absolutely. It's all about education because David services could most likely be coming into play in your family if it's not for you, for your spouse, for your parents, for, for someone. And um, so we are, this is why I got involved with FFS mm -hmm. and it's just to get that word out and to talk to as many people as I can. Once I was able to connect the dots for myself about redirecting my money, I talk to everybody that I possibly can to tell them that this is just so powerful. I mean, someone, you know, a, a 15 day old baby could have a policy that is just compounding interest so that when it's time for them to go to college, there's a college fund that's yeah. there. So it's not just for uh, a death benefit. It's not just for the living for the uh, retirement home or whatever, mm -hmm. it's your retirement income for whichever part you need mm -hmm. and that money is there for you to live on and so on the, with the life insurance part, um, once you retire, you're getting that lifetime income for, for life till age 120. Right, wow, that's something. So it's powerful. We're gonna yeah. switch a little bit to David now. David, um, mm -hmm. my brother passed uh, three years ago. Mm -hmm. um, he was diagnosed uh, with third stage prostate cancer and we were going through that and uh, a year later he suffered an ischemic stroke. Mm. So, Sorry. you know, and we were caring for him at home. David, we had, I bet you, five or six different caregivers mm. to come into the home um, and it ended up with us just trying to um, leave our jobs earlier. My mother was um, in her 80s at that time uh, she became kind of the primary uh, caregiver. And everybody, everybody that came into the home was um, really a sweet person, but we had one young man. He had just gotten here from another country. Mm -hmm. He didn't speak the language very well, but he didn't know how to make a sandwich. He didn't know how to, we had to, oh. <laughs> had to do everything. Then there was an, another person that came in. This was a, a, a younger woman. And, um, 
she just thought she was supposed to stay on the phone all day and, mm -hmm. and kind of make right. up and things like that. She was a little bit too young, I think, or mm -hmm. didn't have the sensitivity that she needed, but yeah. a nice person. Yeah. Everybody was a nice person. And then the third person um, came in and unfortunately, she, she was uh, good in caregiving, mm -hmm. but she didn't know how to get along with my mother. Yeah. So you got to get along with mom. <laughs> you got to get along with mom. That's the, she didn't that's understand how to, how to do that. And so we ended up, it was, it was frustrating. It was oh, very yeah, frustrating. Absolutely. So can you speak a little bit about that, about the, the training and the sure. people you sent out? And sure. if somebody doesn't work out, you know, are you good with switching and giving them somebody else? Yeah, so that's a, that's a great question. Absolutely. And because... You know, a lot of the calls that I get are, I've gone through three or four different companies, they're awful, I need somebody else, I've been recommended to you, you're recommended highly, you know, what makes you different? Um, help us, help us, help us. Mm -hmm. And it, one thing that we really do is we really put a focus on our caregivers. Uh, the great thing about us is that our caregivers have been with us for about 10 plus years, majority of them. And they all have their CNA license, so that means um, certified nursing assistants. Oh, okay. They're required to have that, they all have that. In addition, what, a couple of things that we do to really stand out and make sure that our caregivers are, are one of the best in the industry. One, we give them um, monthly uh, quizzes, so they fill out that they have to understand some of the different uh, areas of concern, let it be dementia or strokes or, and how to care for that. So every month they're getting a different quiz and they can't work the following month unless they've done that first month, unless they finish off that mm. quiz. So we're making sure that education is, is top. The other thing we do is we always recognize our caregivers. Um, you know, Caregiver of the Month awards, random you know, gift cards or whatever it may be. One of the things that this does is allows them to stay with us. They can work through, there's over 800 different care um, caregiving companies in the Washington DC area alone. So we want the best ones to work for us. So that's why we, we spend so much time on the education part. We recognize our caregivers and we really try to match up. So that's the third thing. When you're talking about your mom not liking somebody, that's the most important part for us. Yeah. So what we try to do is every time we, we get that phone call, we always ask, you can have your perfect caregiver. Tell us what it would be like. Yep. And we're not gonna make any promises as far as who we can be able to get out there, but we're gonna do the best we can. Mm -hmm. And T, if we have time for a quick story, I'll, I'll give you a great sure. example. I think we do. All right. I'll, I'll stop you. All right, you can stop it, okay. <laughs> if you see me do this, wind it, wind it up. Wind it up. All right, well, I won't be too long. So I had a client called us up uh, about three months ago. Went through all the things. He, it, same deal, he had caregivers at another company. They were falling asleep at night or, they wouldn't pick up after their mom. They wouldn't help her. There's a stream of you know, pee you know, going. They were just doing an awful job. Mm. So I went through the, um, you know, all the information as far as health records and family and income and everything else. At the end of it, I asked them a very, this question I just said to you, which is, if you could have your perfect caregiver, what would it look like? And they went through a couple things, you know, female or, or age or something like that. And I said, is there anything else, anything in particular? They said, well, my dad really likes politics. Do you think you might be able to get someone with politics? I said, uh-oh. <laughs> you know, we're in DC, I gotta be really careful with politics. So I said, okay, what aisle are we talking about? And he says, well, he's a hardcore Democrat. Mm -hmm. Loves politics, loves talking about it. I said, okay, no promises, because I can't ask them, right. my caregivers, what, what side of the aisle they, you know, they vote for. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but I had a caregiver that loves uh, MSNBC. Yeah. Really loves that type of stuff. So we, we matched them up, this was over three months ago, I can get an email or, and phone calls probably like once a month or a couple of weeks how much they love this caregiver. Oh, yeah. And it really oh, takes yeah. well. oh, it If does. you really try to match them up personality wise and what they really care about, mm -hmm. really makes a huge, huge difference. And I think one of the reasons that we've been so successful is because of that, is that, that caring and, and that really specializing mm -hmm. in, in what the uh, client wants and needs are and being able to, to, to provide the best we can. Well, you sold me when you said <laughs> that the, uh, you keep your people 10 years. I think that's yeah. something. We, our yeah, turnover our is extremely, years. extremely low. Right. Well, our time is up. <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank you both. No, 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 you did fine, perfect. <laughs> uh, I want to thank you both for coming out and I hope you'll come back and join us Absolutely. another time and thank share and educate, you know, do more informing and education. Absolutely. Because I think that's the key Absolutely. on that end. Thank you, Tia.
Our time, as I said earlier, is up, but I want to thank you for joining us on today's segment of The Real Secrets of Money. I have enjoyed sitting in for Shirley Liu, and I've really enjoyed our special guest, David Posner from Live Home and Cary Grant from First Financial Security. Mm -hmm. If you want to know more about what these two individuals can offer you, please give them a call. Their information is showing up on your screen right now. Please join us next week for another great show, and I will say bye-bye and have a great week. Bye.